creatives, welcome back. We are going to do a deep dive into Procreate, starting with the settings, which is the little wrench icon. For our canvas size, we're going to do a very simple 4x6, 300 dpi with a color profile of RGB. Color profiles are very important, especially when you're doing digital or print. You want to make sure you have the correct one chosen. I'm going to start with a background color of this nice neutral nude sand color. I did choose my colors previously, so if you want to see a video about that, I could do one later on. For the layers panel, which is that two page icon up there, there are selections. We're going to go through those in a little bit. Procreate is very famous for its brushes. Now for the brushes you can choose a multitude of different kinds and then if you double click on the brush option, whatever brush you choose, you can go into its settings and you can change up its settings here like I am doing. Now there are lots of different setting options that you can change and modify so you can scroll through them and see how they affect the brush yourself. I am going to be choosing a very simple round brush, choosing a blue color here from the disk view in the color options panel and then I'm going to be creating the ocean because we're going to do a little sunset fine art painting here. Now for the brushes you can change them while you're working with them like I did here. I took the taper off just so I can have a horizon line view. For the other options up here there are some other icons in the top left hand corner. I'm going to be utilizing the selections option where I can create a rectangular selection shape and then I'm going to fill that in with our fill color of blue by just clicking and dragging with my Apple Pencil from the color icon into the shape. Now you can double click on your layers panel here on one of your layers. You can click the rename selection and name the layer whatever you would like. I chose water for this one because, you know, it's water. And then this little N icon over here to the right on that layer is the blending mode. Now for Procreate there's lots of blending modes under each layer. You can change them however so often you would like. And I did make a mistake in a previous video. I failed to see the blending modes in Procreate. They are hidden pretty well here. So I will make an update of this video in the near future just so you can see how the blending modes affect photo composites. But for now, I'm going to keep this layer under the blending mode of normal. These blending modes react the same way they do in um, Photoshop, by the way. I'm going to create a new layer with that plus icon there, choose a new color, and we're going to create a sun using that S icon up at the top, choosing the ellipse shape, and then filling it with a nice orange. I'm going to modify this shape as well. You can modify it by just choosing the eraser tool and taking away what you don't want. So it's very simple. To be able to move up and down layers, you just click and hold with your finger or your Apple Pencil and then you can move them up and down the layers panel so that you can set certain layers above or below other layers. And for the sun layer, I did duplicate it to create the sun ray effect behind it. I will be changing that shortly as well. Now the eraser tool that I am using right now to soften the edges on the sun has lots of different brush options as well. You don't have to just go with your um, preset eraser brush. So when you open up or when you click on the eraser tool you can see all the different types of brushes that you have available to you just like with the brush tool. To create this effect of soft edges, this is one way, I took a soft round brush for my eraser tool and I just erased the edging with very light pressure around the edges of the sun that I created here and that's going to give you a soft edge look. There are other ways that I'll be showcasing later on in the video. You can combine different textured brushes with blending modes and create some really cool effects like I have here with the water. I had a basic flat paintbrush and then I messed around with a duplicate layer of the base layer and then I messed with a whole bunch of the blending modes just to see 
which one I liked the most. Blending modes really make a difference if they are above or below the current layer. They'll react differently depending on what layer is on top or below the blending. You can also utilize your textured brushes as well to create differing textures for different parts of your piece. There are lots of different types of textures for brush options. They range from textures like cotton or there's even one called Old Beach and then you have lots of different ones like for stone, for water, clay. There's even ones, I think there's also ones for hay as well. You can create lots of different textures, lots of different variations for your piece and they can be subtle or they can be pretty loud and in your face. So um, I utilized some of these textures for the sand in this piece and there's also a cloud brush. So I found that to be very handy. I even utilized the cloud brush to make the clouds in the sky for this piece. I did a variation of colors and brush sizing. I also changed some of the settings for the brushes like utilizing the taper option. With this I also increased the spacing for the brush as well depending on what looked best to my opinion at the time. Now you can also utilize um, different brushes for differing areas. For instance, in this piece, for the sky, I also utilized brushes that are not meant for the sky. I utilized the water brush. There is a water brush in here, in your uh, brushes panel. So I did utilize that for the sky. One of my favorite brushes for this piece was the cloud brush. I actually think it looks pretty, pr pretty believable. But the water brush for the sky, now that was a different one. I did not think that that was going to work out, but it ended up giving a nice light blue peekaboo for the sky underneath the clouds because the clouds seem to have overpowered the sky here, but then I brought it back, made it a little lighter by utilizing the water brush for the sky and also utilizing a lot of different blending modes. I think I used lighten option because I color blocked the sky. That's another point too. You can utilize all these different effects like within your layers panel to create the desired effect that you want without having to go through by hand and create the effect yourself, which I find to be very handy. Another handy tip for this program is that you can pinch the screen and you can rotate your canvas. There is no other program that I found that can do this except for Procreate. Procreate is very, this is very handy for Procreate because most of the time it, you find yourself moving your device and with Procreate you don't have to because in the program you can move the canvas yourself, which I find to be oh so helpful. With the combination of the different types of brushes, your blending modes, and there's also some other settings here as well you can create any kind of effect that you want and any kind of look that you want in this program. Layers and blending modes can be extremely helpful, especially if you're trying to create a shadow effect utilizing the blending modes. I did this little effect with the shadow behind an umbrella. I used the color burn option. I put that on top of the neutral base of the sand. This is a really great option if you want a more saturated mid-tone shadow effect if you're going to be uh, illustrating characters within Procreate. Now I did mention before that there were different options for creating soft edges. Under the adjustments panel up at the top left corner, it looks like a magic wand icon. You can utilize these settings to give you a blurred or soft effect because all your motion blurs, your Gaussian blurs, your liquifies, all those type of adjustments are there. And I find that using the motion blur effect and Gaussian blur effect is very helpful. I applied them to the sun layer and to the yellow glow that I put behind the sun. I hope you all enjoyed this deep dive video into Procreate. Let me know what your favorite tool or effect is in this program and I will see you all in the next one.